All right, uh, example 12.1. So DDBST has made the following set of isothermal vapor liquid equilibrium data freely available for the binary system acetone benzene at 318.15 K. Uh, so we're given a table of pressure uh, versus liquid and vapor composition. And we're asked to use interp1 to estimate uh, the liquid and vapor mole fracs at 55 kilopascals. And then also to use this to uh, generate a plot of an estimate of the data uh, over the entire composition range. Right? So this would be an example, I suppose, of using interp1 uh, as a quick uh, estimate to uh, interpolate amongst the data as compared to, say, fitting an excess Gibbs free energy model. Okay. So um, we provide a link uh, to the data. Um, and so I'm going to go over and I'll show you how to copy and paste that into MATLAB. And then we'll go to MATLAB and, and solve this animal. Okay. Uh, so here I am in MATLAB. Let me move myself over. Okay. And hopefully I don't get in the way. Um, I'm going up to the link I provide for the tabulated data. I'm going to copy and paste it. Okay. So I'm just going to do a standard control C. Okay. So now back in MATLAB, when I solve this, I'm going to solve. Um, in a script as compared to command window um, since there's uh, quite a lot here um, and then we can test it all along the way to see how we're doing okay so this is exercise or example 12.1 uh, and we can add some more documentation on top uh, in a you know in a minute or, or towards the end okay so the first thing I want to do is um, create a matrix of our reference VLE data So let me do so um, do acetone benzene at three eighteen okay um, so uh, matrix for VLE data so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do a control V and paste it in okay and so then what I can do is Okay, I can nicely format this as, let's do, um, let's say VLE is equal to, left bracket, and I'm going to tab everything in. So let me just highlight and tab it all at the same time. All right, so uh, what I just did is when MATLAB sees my open brackets, um, it knows that I'm entering data in a matrix. And so remember, I can use a space or a comma to separate elements in a row. And then when I have a enter here at the end of my line, MATLAB will interpret that as being the same thing as a semicolon um, or moving on to the next row uh, in my matrix. Okay, so if I, um, you know, let's see, this is say acetone, benzene, uh, VLE. So if I go back to my command window and I type acetone, benzene, VLE, all right, I see I have a matrix that's 11 by uh, 3. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so that just made it easy in terms of copying and pasting my data from DDBST. Okay, okay and I might, you know, put, say, the URL link in there if I wanted to. Um, this is the word official. Um, but you probably don't want to see that much of me. Uh, in the screencast. <laughs> All right, so I'll just make some labels, okay, so to remind myself of what things are. And then when I'm using interp1, I know I'll want to, it'll make it easier. We could use this matrix, but it'll be easier to deal with vectors, okay? So just like when we were solving our uh, diffie cues using ODE45, let's um, split up uh, VLE matrix into components. And so, um, so let's say P ref will be equal to uh, all rows first column. Okay, uh, X ref will be all rows second column, and then Y ref will be equal to all rows third column. Okay, cool. Okay, so that'll split up all my data into. Um, vectors. And then the next part we're asked to um, estimate 
x1 and y1 at p is equal to 55 kilopascals. Okay. So we see we have data at 50, 53, 57, 60 kilopascals, but not at 55. Um, and so we'll use interp1 uh, to estimate uh, values at that uh, desired pressure. So maybe I'm trying to set up a flash drum uh, and I'm reducing my pressure to 55 kilopascals for some reason, uh, and I want to know what x1 and, and y1 are. Okay, so cool. So the basic form would be, uh, say I want to estimate x using linear interpolation, okay, it would be equal to interp1, okay, so my uh, independent variable in this case would be uh, pref, uh, my dependent variable would be xref, okay, and I want to estimate x at a value of p is 55, um, and if I just want to use linear interpolation I can just leave it at that, okay. I won't suppress the output so that we'll print it um, down below. Okay, and maybe let me give this a better name. This could be like um, x at 55. Okay, no, uh, x linear 55. <laughs> okay, if I want to do the same thing for y, we could do y linear uh, 55 is interp1 p ref y ref 55. Okay. And that's all there is to it. So now that I've suppressed this, if I want to see what happens when I run it, right, I get an estimate of uh, x and y at 55 uh, kilopascals, so 0 0.5285, 0 0.7. And so if I look in between you know, 53 and 58 um, kilopascals, those values seem uh, reasonable. Okay. If I want to use, um, say, P chip, okay, this would be linear interpolation. If you're writing a script and you want to remind yourself that it's linear, right, I can add linear as this optional fourth argument. Right? I'll get the same result, and then it's crystal clear um, that I'm using linear interpolation. Okay? If I want to use um, pchip, okay. Okay, I can, and I'm just going to say copy and paste this. We'll update it. Okay? So now this, I'll update the variable names for pchip. Then the method, now for pchip, I do need this fourth argument to change the interpolation method from the default to pchip. Um, so I'll just go ahead and change that. All right, and now I've got estimates using both linear interpolation and pchip, um, which in this case are an excellent agreement. Right, and we have quite a lot of data, um, so you expect both to, to be in reasonable agreement. Okay, cool. All right, and the last question says, uh, let's make a plot. Let's make a plot. Okay, um, so we're asked to plot the data over the entire composition range. Okay, so think about when we were plotting uh, TXY and um, PXY phase diagrams in chapter, oh, uh, chapter eight, uh, I believe. Chapter nine was our first ODE one. Okay, um, so what I will do is I'll create an X matrix. Um, so let's call it. Um, you know, these will be the X values where I want to um, calculate and turn P and Y. So I'll call it X eval. Okay, and. You know, the computational cost is fairly inexpensive, so we'll just use linspace to create a vector of 100 data points uh, between 0 and 1. Okay, cool. So now if I want to estimate my y values using linear interpolation, no problem. Okay, first let me do an incorrect way just to see an error message. Okay, so if I type y linear, okay, and I use interp1, it would be now, um, uh, ch -ch 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 Let's see, um, I want to estimate y um, at all those x values. So it'll be x ref, comma, y ref, comma, x eval. Okay, so what this is, is before um, I had my um, independent variable, then my dependent variable, right? And I want to estimate my dependent variable at a specific value of my uh, independent value, <laughs> independent variable. So here, a specific value of x. Okay, so interp1 uh, works for vectors, 
So I can give it a single point to estimate uh, my function at, or if I give it a vector of points, it'll perform the calculation at every single element uh, of that vector x of l and return the result as a as a vector, right? Which is pretty darn cool and, and efficient. Okay. Um, so I'm going to run this real quick because we'll see this doesn't work. Okay. Well, I haven't tested it, but it shouldn't work. <laughs> um, right. So I get a bunch of NANs <laughs> at the end, right? And I, at both endpoints, I should get a bunch of NANs. Okay. So the issue is, if I look at my reference data, it begins at x is 0 0.47 and uh, 0.9529. So we're trying to look at x values that go all the way from 0 to 1. So if I have x values less than this and x values greater than this, then that's uh, performing interpolation. And so by default, if I'm using uh, linear interpolation, it, MATLAB won't allow me to extrapolate. If I want to extrapolate, I need to explicitly tell it uh, to allow it. Okay, And so it's a matter of extrapolating in general um, requires that you err uh, a certain level of caution, um, or at least look at your data to uh, see if it's reasonable. Um, and so by default, they're going to tell you that, hey, uh, don't do it, don't allow it. So to perform linear, uh, or to perform extrapolation with the linear interpolation method, um, I need to specify the method. Okay, as my fourth argument, and then I have to specify fifth argument, which is extrap. Okay, to tell that it's okay to extrapolate. Okay, so now if I want to estimate p, uh, the x ref, p ref, uh, x eval, linear. Let me suppress the uh, output on these since they're going to be fairly long. Okay, so these are estimates using linear interpolation. Now, for the heck of it, let's do the same thing using P chip. Okay. And I mean, it's easy enough. I'll just copy and paste this and update it. So um, we saw that when I just specify or when I didn't specify the method, right, it defaults to um, linear interpolation. Okay, and when it defaults to linear interpolation, uh, by default, MATLAB does not allow you to um, extrapolate. So if you just specify the method as being p chip or spline, without explicitly telling it to extrapolate, uh, by default, MATLAB will allow it but we can leave it in there to make it crystal clear. Okay. Cool, so um, there's that. And now let's uh, generate a plot. Um, so let's, uh, we'll have a hold on, and then we'll plot first our reference data. So if I first plot my reference data, okay, this is uh, PXY, so I'm gonna plot uh, P ref versus X ref. Okay, and let's say plot our reference data as black circles. Then I'm going to plot P ref versus Y ref. I say black circles. Okay. Um, next, um, linear interpolation. And so we'll plot, so now this would be P linear versus x eval, the x values I evaluated my function at. And let's use, uh, I don't know, uh, red line. P from linear interpolation versus y from linear interpolation. Let's plot that as a red line. And p chip. Right. We could have done spline, but uh, I think that both of these methods will be in very good agreement, so it really wouldn't tell us much. P, P chip versus X of L. Uh, let's make this a blue line. I guess I could have just copied and pasted, but I'm in it now. P, P chip in X of L, this would be Y, P chip. Blue 
line. Um, uh, I suppose we'll want to make an X label. So my X label would be um, X or Y. So X1 or Y1. The underscore 1 um, we'll write as a subscript. Y label would be um, P, and that's in kilopascals. If I want to add a title, I can add a title. This would be, um, let's do acetone benzene at 3 teen. Bam. Um, if I wanted to add a legend, I could add a legend. So first would be reference, then linear, uh, and then p chip. Well, that should be, oh, and maybe let's print it. <laughs> so if we print it, um, we've got so many tricks up our sleeves now that uh, we could just go crazy. So this would be acetone, benzene. Um, and on my computer, I like to plot as an EPS. Um, you know, you could do dash D PDF and then PDF uh, if you want PDFs. Um, for some reason, for EPSs, I need to add this dash C at the end of that. Not exactly sure. Okay, so I have that saved. We already saw how we were able to uh, interpolate without a problem. I'm going to clear the screen, and then let me go ahead and run um, acetone benzene VLE, get our predictions, and we get um, our plot. Okay, cool. So I can just click on this um, legend and drag it, and what you'll find is you can kind of see a little red under the data here. Uh, but essentially, linear interpolation and PCHIP give a nearly uh, identical uh, representation of our data. Right? You just see some very small uh, glimpses of um, linear coming out. And actually, my legend isn't quite right. My legend isn't quite right because I plot bubble line and then do line. Right? So before I mess myself up, let me just delete the legend. That would require a little more massaging. <laughs> so nonetheless though, um, both methods are essentially perfect agreement. Uh, the fit isn't quite exact. The reason I say that is if I notice down here in the limit the x1 goes to 0, they don't quite match up like they should. Um, but if you need a quick estimate of your data from uh, using tabulated data, hey, you know, we just put that together uh, without a problem. Um, not really solve anything just using this built-in function uh, in TERP1. Okay, cool, fun, excellent.